Israel hopes that the outgoing Obama administration will prevent any more damage being done to Israel at the UN in its waning days. I wish I could be comforted by the promise that the U.S. says we will not bring any more resolutions to the U.N. That's what they said about this previous resolution. We have it on absolutely incontestable evidence that the United States organized, advanced, and brought this resolution to the United Nations Security Council. We'll share that information with the incoming administration. Some of it is sensitive. It's all true. You saw some of it uh, in the protocol released in the, an Egyptian paper. There's plenty more. It's the tip of the iceberg. So they say, but we didn't bring it. And they could take John Kerry's speech with the six points. It could be raised uh, in uh, the French International Conference a few days from now and then brought to the U.N. So France will bring it. Or uh, Sweden, not a noted friend of Israel, could bring it. And the United States could say, well, we can't vote against our own policy. We've just enunciated it. I think the United States, if it's true to its word, or at least if it's now true to its word, should now come out and say we will not allow any resolutions, any more resolutions in the Security Council on Israel, period. Not we will bring or not bring. We will not allow any and stop this game, the charades. I think that the decisions that are vital to Israel's interests and the future of its children, they won't be made through speeches in Washington or votes in uh, the United Nations or conferences in Paris. They'll be made by the government of Israel around the negotiating table, making them on behalf of the one and only Jewish state, a sovereign nation that is the master of its own fate. And one final thought. I personally know the pain, the loss, and the suffering of war. That's why I'm so committed to peace. Because for anyone who's experienced it, as I have, war and terror are horrible. I want young Palestinian children to be educated like our children. But they're not educated for peace. The Palestinian Authority educates them to lionize terrorists and to murder Israelis. My vision is that Israelis and Palestinians both have a future of mutual recognition, of dignity, mutual respect, coexistence. But the Palestinian Authority tells them that they will never accept and should never accept the existence of a Jewish state. So I ask you, how can you make peace with someone who rejects your very existence? See, this conflict is not about houses or communities in the West Bank, Judea, Samaria, the Gaza district, or anywhere else. This conflict is and has always been about Israel's very right to exist. That's why my hundreds of calls to sit with President Abbas for peace talks have gone unanswered. That's why my invitation to him to come to the Knesset was never answered. That's why the Palestinian government continues to pay anyone who murders Israelis a monthly salary. The persistent Palestinian refusal to recognize a Jewish state remains the core of the conflict. And its removal is the key to peace. Palestinian rejection of Israel and support for terror are what the nations of the world should focus on if they truly want to advance peace. And I can only express my regret and say that it's a shame that Secretary Kerry does not see this simple truth. Thank you.